AWS Cloud Architecture Diagramming. Let's take a look at it. What's going on, tech fam? Welcome back to the Gadget Tools Unlimited YouTube channel, where we engage in IT career talk, tutorials, reviews, and news. This is going to be another video in the AWS series, and today we're going to take a look at cloud architecture diagramming, specifically with the AWS platform, but the principles that we will be discussing here can really be applied to any cloud platform. Right now, we're gonna jump into a little cloud diagramming lab, and I will be giving explanations as we go along. So without further ado, let's get right to it. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is open a web browser. As you can see, we've done so here. Let's just go ahead and uh, type inside this Google search bar, AWS, AWS architecture icons, right? Google returns some results. What we wanna do is click on the AWS architecture icons here. It's going to bring us to an AWS web page that houses the architectural icon information. Now you can download the specific icons individually onto your computer in kits but we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go down here and we're gonna choose a drawing tool that's going to help us create our diagrams. And as you can see, there's quite a few to choose from. 15, I'm familiar with Lucidchart, Draw.io, and Gliffy. For this tutorial, we're going to use Draw.io. I think this is my favorite uh, diagramming tool. And so what you wanna do is click Draw.io and it will open draw.io directly up for you. Now you can also download a desktop version that you can install on your computer and it'll just always be on your desktop for you. Uh, but either way, this is gonna work for you. As you can see, we've got a blank canvas here and we've got a whole bunch of stuff on the left navigation panel and we've got a whole bunch of options on the right navigation panel across the top you have your usual options bar toolbar it has all the usual file import open save your document you can go through and arrange your workspace rotate it reverse it all of your usual options are here across the top Go all the way down to the bottom where it says more shapes right here. Click more shapes. And if you go scroll down, you can include more shapes and more options for your diagramming. And so AWS 19 is the latest AWS uh, icon version. But if you want, you can also check 17 and 18. We'll leave those. But as you can see here, they've got Azure, Cisco, IBM, all kinds of icons that are related to different platforms that you can use to create your diagrams, right? So we've got AWS 19 check, we're gonna say apply, and then it's going to apply it over here. And then we just go through and start looking for what we want. So we can go compute, gonna show us all the compute icons, EC2 types and everything here. If we went to containers, gonna show us all the container icons. Now, you can individually go through, look at all the icons and manually click them and drag them where you want. Or if you don't want to do it that way, you don't wanna look through the icons, you can always go up here and just search shape. So whenever you start your diagram, the first thing you're gonna start with typically is your AWS cloud account environment. So what we're gonna do is if you look under AWS groups, you'll see all of the different ones, region, cloud, availability zone, security groups, so on and so forth. You can go up here to the search bar and type in what you need. So if you're looking for an internet gateway, uh, for instance, you could type in gateway. 
and it'll show you all the different types of gateways. If you wanted a VPC, type in VPC, it'll show you all the different kinds of VPCs. If you want a uh, region, it'll show you the region icons, so on and so forth. So for you know ease, I like to look at the little groups. And so the first thing you always want to do is start with your AWS account, right? So AWS cloud account. When you click it, it'll show on to your canvas. You grab it in the corner, move it up to where you want it, right? So we're gonna make our view about 75% so we can see the whole page. Let's do 50, all right? Now we can see the whole page. We're going to take our AWS cloud icon and we're gonna grab one of the corners and we're gonna drag it open, right? So everything you build inside your diagram goes inside this box because this is your AWS cloud account. So everything you build architecture wise fits inside an individual account. When you go to AWS and you start creating instances, you start creating stacks and you start creating architectures, you're doing that inside what your AWS account. So when you want to build a diagram, you always want to start with the cloud. And at least this is the way I do it. Other people, you know, once you become more advanced, you don't need to go through step by step and do all of this. But this also helps um, people who may not be as advanced as you visualize what's going on. So we've got our AWS cloud here, right? OK, we're going to begin with taking a look at a single tier design, right? Um, so if I go up here and I type in text, I get a choice of some text I can add to my diagram. So I'll choose title. I'm going to move this up a little bit, double click it. I can type in what I want. So I'm going to say. single tier, right? And we're, whoops. That's not right. There we go. Single tier design, right? Because this is going to be a single tier design. Now, single tier design usually means that all the services and levels of operation are on a single machine or instance. Everything is in one tier. So the presentation, logic, and database content are all on one level. This is a real simple design and really only good for dev or test environments or low traffic servers with very predictable workloads, home lab environments, if you will. All right, so we're gonna get started with building a single tier design right now. So. Okay, now, as was stated before, you always start with your AWS cloud. We got our AWS cloud account. This is our account. If we wanted to change the name of this, we could just double click that name and we'd say my account, right? Hit enter. Now it's my account. Now we know it's my account. Okay, first thing we want to do is select what region that we're going to be deploying our resources, right? So we got to have a region. If we look in groups, we click, we find the region, click it, we can bring it in here. So after you put your AWS account, once you're in your AWS account, you select what region you're going to be deploying services. Now you're in a region. So you got AWS account and then you've chosen your region. Next thing you need is a VPC, right? And if we look in groups over here to the left, there's VPC, we can drag it in here. Now you have to set up your network, right? And that is going to include a VPC. In fact, you have to start with a VPC. Now we know that AWS, start your account out with a default VPC, but when you're ready to build your, your uh, infrastructure and your network for production, you have to build your own VPC. All right, now your VPC spans across availability zones, right? So 
I, it depending on how you look at it, you could say the VPC goes inside the availability zone or the availability zones go inside the VPC. The way I do it is I put the availability zones inside the VPC. It kind of makes more sense like that when you think about it. Do whatever you want as long as you can understand and explain it, right? We can name this my VPC and we can name the region North America, uh, you know, EU, whatever region we're in. Now that we have our VPC, VPCs span across availability zones. And depending on how you look at it, the VPC can be inside availability zone or the availability zone can be inside the VPC. Since a VPC spans availability zone, it makes more sense logically, I guess if you think about it, to put the availability zones inside the VPC. So that's what we're gonna do. We, if we go to groups, we find the availability zone, click it, we have it right here. So boom, now we have an availability zone. This is where we're going to deploy all of our resources. And we'll call this one US East-1. Uh, because I'm in the US, I'm closer to the East-1. This is the availability zone. I choose to deploy my resources. So in this single tiered account, we're saying that our presentation, our compute, and our database is all going to be housed basically in one EC2 instance or one server, right? We're going to have to have some subnets. We've got our routing all figured out and everything. Our VPC has a CIDR. We've separated it out into subnets. And so we're going to go over here to groups and we're going to look for a subnet now uh, a subnet is by default private it becomes public when you add an internet gateway um, but when you're building architecture and you know a particular subnet is going to be a public subnet you have the ability to just click public subnet and so you can keep your visualization separated so we're just going to boom make our subnet public right here okay so we got our AWS account in whatever region we we're in our VPC in our availability zone we've chosen to operate out of and we've got our subnet which is a, going to be a public subnet we want to deploy an EC2 instance into this public subnet here so we're going we're going to put in a little EC2 instance right here now by this being a single tier architecture, our web server, so we're, we're, we're using this as a web server, we're putting out content on this single EC2 instance or server. We've got our compute, obviously, because um, it's a server, so we're doing our compute and any kind of scripting or anything we got going on that's handling data applications or anything like that, that's also on here. And we've got our database. Our database instance is also on the same server. So all of our stuff is on this single server. And this is single tier architecture. If anything happened to this server, all of those services, all of those service levels will go down so the server went down our users can't access our web content our applications can't access our database and there is no compute to speak of happening right um now say for instance we had other applications that were using this database when this and the database is on this server when this server go down and we've got applications maybe on a different server that uses this database guess what those applications are going to be down as well because the database is down because it's on single. So this is not decoupled. This is monolithic and it is not highly available, right? You're going to have to have an internet gateway. So if we said gateway and we found an internet gateway and we brought it and we put it right here because You've got a public web server, right? You got a public server here and you want people to be able to access content 
from the internet. It doesn't necessarily have to be public, but you want certain individuals to be able to access the data or content. From the web, you gotta have a gateway because that's public facing, right? And you may have to, and so we also will have like route 53. We'll have route 53 going to manage the routing of this from multiple areas, regions around the world or whatever. And we might have CloudFront over here, uh, CloudFront distribution to uh, so our users can get to this stuff, right? Sync architecture, but like I said, it's mostly used for dev and test environments or very uncrucial or uncritical workloads uh, that are very small, right? And that's kind of what it looks like. And we're using the architectural drawing to demonstrate or, or visualize what we're building here. And this would be a typical single tier architecture build. Now, if we wanted redundancy, we can also make this a little more redundant by just simply, if we took this and we duplicated it, boom, over here. So we got another availability zone. Let's say this one's gonna be US East 2, right? Or 1A, this one be 1A, this one be 1B, whatever, or 2, right? We got the same public subnet. If I can get it, we're gonna duplicate that. Over here, we got the same EC2 instance with the same web server, applications, database instances, everything's the same. Everything's the same, right? On both of these. But we got uh, a load balancer. And <laughs> we can do application. Depending on, you know, uh, what we want to, did I get it? Yes, here it is. We got a load balancer in here, right? And this is how we gonna make ourselves more redundant because we gonna have some failover going on. Uh, and we, we could even put an auto scaling group down here that says if this server goes down, we got the load balancer that's going to route, reroute the traffic over to this server. And we got an auto scaling group that's gonna rebuild this server, build us another server with another public, rebuild this whole thing. While all the traffic is being routed here, when the new one comes up, we can route the traffic back to that one and that be the primary. And this always be failover, or we can leave this one, make that one however we want it. And that's how we would build in uh, more availability on a single tier kind of uh, architecture design, right? And so, you know, there's a lot more that's going to go into this route tables, routes, and so on and so forth. But right now, I'm just trying to teach you the basics of architecture design. And we're obviously going to have to use some of the resources and some of the icons so I can fully explain the, the amount that I'm trying to explain. There's a lot more to all of this. And that's what you are going to do on your free time. And as you go through and progress and learn, you're gonna pick up all the nuances that go in with all of this. This is this just the basic design. So you can wrap your head around it because I know sometimes it can be hard. It certainly was, um, you know, it wasn't the easiest thing for me to understand. Like I could understand the concepts, but I couldn't visualize how they would fit together in my mind because it's, it's the cloud, right? <laughs> There's nothing physical to attach. So, um, it, it took, it wasn't very easy to get this all in my head, visualized in a, in a, in a manner. And there's just not that much out there uh, of, in the way of an explanation. So I'm glad I'm able to provide this from my point of view. And I think there is, uh, you know, maybe a lot of people out there who could grasp this more easily uh, with the way that I'm explaining it. So to keep from mumbling, we're going to move right along. This was single tier architecture. Let's move right on to the next thing this was single tier architecture we're going to move right on to the next thing okay and this time we're going to do a three tier 
architecture and this still falls under multi-tier architecture but this is going to be three tiers we're going to go here we're going to type text we're going to choose our title text and we're going to say three tier design right three tier design we're going to bring that up and center it like so now let's start building our three tier design here right and so we're going to have a presentation layer tier one a logic layer tier two and a database layer tier three now we can have two database layers and that would be four tiers we can have two presentation layers and three database layers so i mean it'll be multi-tier it can go on and on you can mix and match these Presentation doesn't always have to be in layer one. It can be computing layer one, presentation layer two. You can mix it up however you want. This is just an overall understanding of the design aspect of the tiered architecture, right? Okay, so let's go. Uh, what do we need first? We need our, our AWS account, our cloud account, right? I'll go ahead, I'll drag her open. And this is just one way to do this. You actually don't necessarily have to put the box here. You can just set up your diagram with the knowledge that obviously it's in an AWS account. Obviously it's in a VPC. Obviously it's going to be in a subnet and you can just lay out the, the icons of the resources that you're going to use and how they're interconnected and you don't have to do all of the structure, but this is a tutorial on how to understand the basic design aspects of architecture. So that's what we're doing here. And we got our cloud account. What do we need next? We need a VPC, right? So let's put us a VPC in here. All right, and we go, uh, let's drag it on out. Inside here, we got our VPC. And what do we need next? We need availability zones, right? So let's do an availability zone here. And we want to always make sure that we've got redundancy and failover. So we're going to do another availability zone. Let's go ahead and delete that over here. Boom. And let's make this one fatter too. I like to look at the fat ones. So we got our two availability zones. This is going to be one A this is going to be 1b you can also have multiple regions so you if you were building an overall design for a solution you'd have your aws account you'd have a region here a region there a vpc here a vpc in this region and then separate your um, availability zones out from there um, and so on so and you'll learn that as you become more familiar with aws and architecture and cloud architecture and design and so forth. So we got our availability zones, we got our VPC, we got our UDIG, right? Now we're gonna separate this into three tiers, right? So we are gonna do, let's get some subnets here, a public subnet, and this is going to be our presentation layer. Okay. Actually, let me get rid of this. Get rid of that. Okay. Got the public subnet. We're going to put it in here. Right. Okay. So we got a public subnet. This is our presentation layer. This is the user facing, and it's going to have our web servers in it, right? So let's go ahead and get us a EC2 instance so we can demonstrate our web server and we're gonna just plop that in there now we can change this to this is gonna be public subnet we're gonna say pub pub one right uh and then 
we're going to do a, a logic layer and that's going to be a private subnet. So we, let's do, we're going to do a private subnet here. We're going to bring her down on size. We're going to bring her over here. And this one is going to be privilege. All right. And then we're going to do another private subnet. Bring that. Do, do, do. This one's going to be priv2. Right. And so now you can see the three layers. We got the presentation layer. We've got our uh, logic layer and we've got our database layer and uh, we can do we're going to do EC2 instances in, in here. We're going to do uh, database instances in here. We're going to duplicate this architecture over to another availability zone so that we can have failover high availability. Right. Uh, we're going to organize our resources into levels, logic, database and presentation. This is going to create high availability and scalability and a decoupled ar architecture for us, right? We've decoupled our architecture by splitting it in layers and we've made high availability because we've copied it over here into our other um, availability zone and we've made great scalability and ease of scalability by separating our resources into their own groups and they can scale independently. And this is a three tier design. Now we're gonna have in order for this to work, obviously we're gonna need an internet gateway. We might use Route 53 for DNS, and we might use an Amazon Cloud Front service to tie it all together, put an application load balancer in here to route our traffic um, for failover, and boom, everything is beautiful, right? So that is an example of a multi-tiered design. All right, uh, the next, type of design I'm going to show you here and really quickly because I know this video is probably getting kind of long here. Let's go ahead. And this is going to be serverless. Okay, serverless design. And no matter whether you're doing tiered architecture, serverless microservices, whatever it is, guess what you're always going to start with, right? That's correct, your AWS cloud account, right? Boom. And guess what you always gonna have after that, right? Correct. It's always gonna be based in one region or another, right? And those two for serverless is gonna be it. Now, some of this, some of the resources and services you use will have to be based in a VPC but not all of them and not necessarily, right? You might use, you, and so we're not using any EC2 instances uh, for this. This is completely serverless. We're gonna use programs like AWS Certificate Manager, AWS API Gateway, Lambda. Uh, we're gonna use separate thing, separate storage devices like S3. We're gonna use services like ElastiCache, we're gonna use databases like DynamoDB, and they're all going to be connected into this little architecture, and um, they're gonna to work together to do exactly what you want to do, but completely serverless, right? And let's just kind of build, start to build a little bit so you can get an idea of what this is gonna look like. So I'm gonna go up here, and I'm going to first type uh, let's do cloud front. Oh, let's put some put cloud front in here, <laughs> right? And we're gonna use AWS. <sighs> Boom. So we might use AWS Certificate Manager here. I'll say Boom API Gateway. Yeah. In 
inside these here. Lambda. I use a lambda instance somewhere. And in here somewhere. Mm -mm. Put a database instance in there. Mm. Uh, okay, so this is, you know, kind of like the basics of a serverless design. It's still tiered because you've separated your layers you got your storage you got your database you got lambda handling all the compute and all of this is like mostly fully managed resources you don't really have to do anything it's all going to be taken care of by the use of functions right and so in fact it is a lot more complicated than what i'm showing you here but in the interest of time and simplicity i just wanted to sh stick to the architectural side and show you what this is going to look like and how you would be setting that up and that is going to be it for the aws architectural drawing design tutorial i hope this has been helpful if you are not already subscribed to this channel and you value the content that you've been seeing on this channel or you even got some value out of this particular piece of content go ahead and subscribe to the channel new content is being dropped all the time and uh, do us a favor hit the like button so we can get these videos in front of those who may find them beneficial and until the next video tech fam peace